I want a tea that are high in polyphenols. And if you're interested in that and you're shopping at Trader Joe's, today you're gonna be the youngest you will be for the rest of your life. And unfortunately, as you age, there's gonna be so much wear and tear that if you don't repair correctly and quickly, you're gonna look and feel older than you actually are. And this is why activating your stem cells, they are so important. In fact, people fly to far away places and pay a lot of money in the hopes that stem cell therapy can reboot their health. But what they don't realize is that your body can make your own stem cells and what you do on a daily basis can make a greater impact than what you do once in a while. So here are 10 foods that you can eat daily to boost your stem cells every day. Now, number one are blueberries, which are rich in antioxidants, particularly anthocyanins, which can enhance stem cell proliferation and reduce oxidative stress. This promotes a healthier stem cell environment to encourage those guys to grow. Now, when you're at the store, you're going to find two options, wild versus farm grown blueberries. Buy the wild berries as they are richer in anthocyanins because they are a darker shade of deep blue. Now, you will also find fresh blueberries versus frozen blueberries. Both can have comparable antioxidant levels, unlike dried blueberries, which are significantly less. Now, fresh blueberries, they contain higher vitamins like vitamin C when they are consumed soon after harvest. However, frozen blueberries, they actually retain a lot of their vitamins, especially if they are flash frozen shortly after being picked. And if the fresh ones are just picked too early and sitting around the store. But the texture is different. Fresh blueberries are gonna be firmer and they're gonna have a more vibrant flavor. Frozen blueberries, they get soft and juicy when they're thawed. Those guys are great for smoothies. Fresh blueberries, they don't really last long. They usually spoil within a week and they need to be refrigerated. Frozen blueberries, they can be stored in the freezer for months. Now, stem cells are so sensitive to oxidative stress that if they don't work right and they don't produce when they're supposed to, that just speeds up your aging. I mean, that's just a part of life. Even healthy mitochondria, they get oxidative stress through the production of reactant oxygen species, which need to be deactivated by antioxidant defenses. It's like a battle all the time. And these antioxidant defenses, they need supplies. You need to restock your army. Your most powerful antioxidant defense is called the glutathione redox system. And it only works if you can quickly regenerate glutathione. And the rate in which you need glutathione is dependent upon your stress. Now, remember the I Love Lucy episode in which she has to pack so many chocolates in the box and then they turn up the conveyor belt speed and it goes so fast that she can't keep up and then chocolate spills everywhere and she's hiding it everywhere. It's such a hilarious mess. Now, you can solve this problem by getting more Lucy's or having Lucy's work faster. So the glutathione redox system is like the Lucy and the stress in your life is like those chocolates on the conveyor belt. The faster the chocolate comes out or the faster the oxidative stress comes out, that Lucy has to work faster or you're going to have to be able to clone her. Now you can't clone Lucy, but you can regenerate your glutathione through targeted nutrients. Cysteine or the supplement in acetylcysteine can regenerate glutathione. And with the help of sulforaphanes, which you will find in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, which is number two, you're going to have a powerful antioxidant system. Some people think broccoli is too hard. And for those, you may prefer broccoli sprouts, which is number three. Broccoli sprouts are especially high in sulforaphanes, which can also stimulate stem cell activity by modulating the expression of genes involved in cellular renewal and repair. Sprouts especially from seeds like broccoli and mung beans, they tend to have a higher concentration of vitamins such as vitamin C, vitamin K, and some B vitamins compared to their mature counterparts. Sprouts are often rich in minerals like iron, magnesium, potassium. And the bioavailability of these minerals can be higher in sprouts due to reduction of anti-nutrients like phytic acid during sprouting. Sprouting actually breaks down complex carbohydrates and increases the availability of proteins, making sprouts easier to digest. And sprouts, they contain a variety of antioxidants, which can be higher in concentration than their mature plants. For example, broccoli sprouts have been found to contain significantly more sulforaphane than fully grown broccoli. And the amount of sulforaphanes you need is really dependent upon the toxins you're exposed to. 
how fast your conveyor belt is going. Because these toxins are coming at you at different speeds, just like the conveyor belt chocolates at Lucy. These toxins can be potent oxidative stressors like heavy metals. And some foods are loaded with them, especially seafood and chocolate. They can disrupt cellular signaling and cause apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. That's bad news for stem cells. And another way to kill your stem cells is through chemotherapy, like when you get cancer chemotherapy. And these drugs, they target the cancer cells, but they also damage damage healthy cells. And this leads to a reduced bone marrow function that can be long-term permanent damage. A lot of times people say their bodies are not the same after chemotherapy. And a common well-accepted toxin in the environment is cigarette smoke. It contains so many harmful chemicals that can reduce your stem cells activity and ability to multiply. This is particularly true in the lungs, bladder, pancreas, kidney, stomach, cervix. Basically, every tissue gets affected by cigarette smoking. So hence, when you quit smoking, your skin looks better and your body just functions better. So most Americans, we don't smoke, but we're exposed to pesticides like organophosphates and carbamates. A well-known pesticide called glyphosate or Roundup, that's known to alter DNA. And if you have pesticides in your home, you may want to reconsider using them as that, that can impair your stem cell and lead to neurodevelopmental issues in yourself and your family. I mean, the reality is toxins, they surround us outside of our homes and inside of our homes. How about a bottle of wine? Do you think you need one? Well, that's a fermentation product of germs. That's their waste product. It's their toxin. That's why they want to get rid of it. And it's interesting how people won't eat things on the dirty dozen list, but they'll gladly drink a toxic waste product like alcohol, which significantly stuns stem cells especially in the bone marrow, to cause anemia. And I don't think we have time to mention all the other side effects from alcohol. Now, I was lucky. My parents, they were well aware that we were surrounded by harmful chemicals that can tax our health. And growing up throughout my life, I learned about food, just like learning about math at school or balancing a checkbook or washing the dishes and folding clothes. And when my mom cooked, she would call me to the kitchen just to teach me a tip. And honestly, I didn't like cooking as a child. I didn't have the patience, I didn't like chopping things, I didn't like washing things, but I did love eating her food. My dad also had certain things that he did with food every single day. And one of those things was drinking green tea. He always offered me some, but I didn't like it. And my parents, they had a bunch of different teas in their cupboard. And every time somebody would visit them, the visitor would bring my parents a specialty tea. And I didn't learn to appreciate tea or even drink it until I was an adult. And the closest I came to drinking tea in my young adult life was to drink a sugary boba tea drink. And it's really strange in America, we don't actually value these ancient traditional foods. We have to pay a premium price for messing up these ancient whole foods by adding a bunch of junk in it, like sugar and fat. When we add the ultra processed ingredient, all of a sudden it's a specialty food. I had access to lots of premium teas, but at the time I really had no interest unless they put a boba in it. Fortunately, I came to my senses and I now really Realize the benefit of number four, green tea. Green tea contains epigallocatechin gallate, EGCG, which has been shown to promote the growth of stem cells and protect them from damage by regulating various signaling pathways to reduce inflammation. And there's a reason why Chinese people drink a lot of tea. That's because green tea originated in China over 4,000 years ago. And the discovery of green tea was kind of a fluke. The Emperor Shen Nan in 2737 BC is said to have drank some water that was accidentally contaminated by some tea leaves that floated into the water. But he loved it. And today I enjoy drinking green tea, but I actually eat it for its anti-infective properties and its ability to boost my metabolism, help me maintain my weight, reduce my LDL cholesterol, reduce my cancer risk, and control my blood sugar levels. Believe it or not, it's actually can have activity to reduce uterine fibroids. China is the largest producer of green tea. And did you know that black tea is just fermented green tea? Fermentation actually reduces the catechin content. And I'm actually interested in the catechin content because catechins have been shown to have antiviral properties and reduce a person's symptoms of getting sick when they're exposed to germs. And these studies were done in Japanese children who drank tea during the winter, even rinsing their mouth was beneficial. 
and they actually can reduce cavity causing bacteria like Streptococcus mutans. Now, some of you have asked me what kind of green tea would I recommend? So the problem with green tea is that certain regions of China have a substantial amount of lead due to air and soil pollution. However, if you're not eating the tea leaf, and that's okay because the lead is trapped in the tea leaf. If you're drinking just the water part, lead is not water soluble, so none of it is gonna leach out into your water. And younger teas tend to have less lead than older leaves. And younger leaves are usually picked to make green tea, while older leaves are used to make black tea, like oolong tea. And the other thing some people are concerned about are pesticides. So there have been trace amounts of pesticides found in green tea, although it's not really a significant amount to cause adverse health effects. And one way that Asians drink tea is that they flash rinse it. So you pour hot water on the tea and then you throw that away. You're kind of blanching the tea leaves. But, you know, I want a tea that are high in polyphenols. And if you're interested in that and you're shopping at Trader Joe's, well, the Trader Joe Organic Green Tea has 263 milligrams of total catechins per serving with 118.3 grams being EGCG. And this was tested by Consumer Labs. Now, if you're not close to your Trader Joe's, but you're near a target, Rishi Green Tea has 261.6 milligrams of catechins with 113.3 milligrams being EGCG. CG. And if you're next to a Costco, then the Kirkland brand has 133 total catechin amount with 43.9 being EGCG. Some people like their green tea with strawberries. I personally don't think that combo tastes good, but I eat them separately. So I eat number five, strawberries for their antioxidant benefits. Strawberries have elagic acid and quercetin, which can help with stem cells. It can also help reduce oxidative stress. And all this promotes cell longevity. Now the anthocyanins are the pigments that give strawberry its red color and they're linked to reduce inflammation and improve heart health. Strawberries are also a good source of vitamin C, which is crucial for collagen synthesis. Now, lagic acid is known for its anti-cancer properties. It also has folate, important for DNA synthesis and repair, which is vital for cell division and growth. And in humans eating strawberries for six months, reverse precancerous changes in patients with esophageal dysphagia. If you think about it, your gut take so much abuse from food every day. And every time you eat, you're bound to damage something in your gut. So your body has to have a way to repair. And it does because the GI tract has stem cells hidden in your intestinal crypt. And in your colon, you have roughly 10 million intestinal crypts. And this tissue needs to be rapidly replaced three to five times in a day. This is why it's important to eat stem cell friendly foods, especially if you want to regenerate your stem cells. But if you don't have access to strawberries, you can also try black raspberries. Now, I've never actually tasted black raspberries, even though they are native plant in the US but they're really native in the Pacific Northwest and I live in the Pacific Southwest, but I have found blackberries. They're apparently a cousin to black raspberries and it's hard to tell a difference between the two when they're on a vine, but when you pluck it off, black raspberries should be hollow inside where black berries, well, the entire fruit comes off. And if you ever get a chance to eat some fresh black raspberries, you should probably do so because I heard there's a very narrow growing season and several pilot intervention trials in human, including multiple cancers like esophageal cancer, colorectal cancer, has suggested that black raspberries have activity against cancer cells. And apparently black raspberries have more anthocyanins than blueberries and blackberries. Now you would think that it would be difficult to conduct a study based on a plant that has such a short growth season. Luckily for us, they use freeze dried black raspberries. Did you know that the most popular fruit in the world are the mangoes? There's actually over a thousand varieties. And mangoes, they originate in South Asia, specifically in the region that includes modern day India, Bangladesh, and Miramar. Mangoes have been cultivated for over 4,000 years and are considered sacred in some cultures. Then they're often associated with love and fertility. I definitely love eating mangoes. A mature mango tree can produce hundreds to thousands of mangoes in a single season, depending on the tree's age, variety, and growth conditions. And on average, a healthy tree can yield between 100 to 300 mangoes annually, but exceptional trees, they can produce more than 1,000 mangoes in a good year. And when I went to Hawaii, I saw a giant mango tree at my friend's neighbor's house. There's like tons of mangoes, but mangoes aren't a native plant in Hawaii. It was actually introduced in the early 19th century. Apparently seeds were brought from the Philippines in 1824. Now those mangoes, they don't just taste good. 
They're full of antioxidants that protect stem cells from oxidative damage. Their yellow color is beta carotene, a precursor molecule to vitamin A, which is also a powerful antioxidant. And like strawberries, mangoes contain vitamin C. In addition, mangoes contain unique polyphenolic compounds like mango farin that have been shown to reduce blood sugars and promote stem cells. Now, if you're looking for a tasty mango, go to either a farmer's market or an Asian supermarket. Number seven is turmeric. It is the most well-studied spice in the world, there are literally thousands of publications on turmeric. There are several biologically active compounds in turmeric, but the most well studied one is called curcumin. Curcumin is known to activate signaling pathways to promote stem cell growth and reduce inflammation. Curcumin scavenges free radicals and enhances activity of your body's own antioxidant enzymes. This protects the cell from oxidative stress. And curcumin may also influence how stem cells grow. For example, some research indicates that it can promote special stem cells like osteoblasts, which are bone forming stem cells and adipocytes, which are fat forming stem cells. They may stimulate neuronal stem cells and promote the differentiation of different neurons, which may protect against dementia. And apparently it also has activity against several cancer cell lines. Number eight is another spice I've eaten in my entire life, garlic. My dad, he used to eat raw garlic bulbs and he would carry it everywhere he went. He even carried it at work. And on the weekends, he would be sitting there peeling garlic and sometimes he would make me peel them too. Now, garlic has multiple reasons for why it's such a strong antioxidant, including a molecule called allicin. But, you know, when you heat your garlic, you actually lose some of the allicin depending on how you heat it. Garlic also has selenium. It's known to enhance stem cell activity, reduce inflammation, and it can even affect the stem cells in your blood vessels. So when you go to the store, you notice that there are several types of garlic. They're primarily categorized into two main groups, hard neck garlics or soft neck garlics. Hard neck garlic varieties, they have a hard central stem known as escape that grows from the bulb. And these types typically have fewer but larger cloves and they often have a more complex flavor. Soft neck garlic varieties, they do not have a hard stem and they tend to produce more cloves than the hard neck varieties. They're typically easier to braid and they store well, but they're a bit plain. They're actually a pain in the butt to peel. Now you may also have seen an elephant garlic, which is more of a leek than a true garlic because it has a mild flavor and it's pretty large in size. And I've tried one, it's not as spicy, it's really kind of bitter. And usually I don't like to eat raw garlic, it's kind of hard on my stomach because it's so spicy. So I have to eat my raw garlic with other foods. Yeah, I've never liked it. My dad used to make me eat chunks of raw garlic during dinner. It was so spicy. I really don't know how he did it. Now, number nine is another root called beets, which are rich in nitrates, which become nitric oxide in your body that open up your blood vessels. When you have more blood flow, you get more oxygen, and that's great for your stem cells. Beets also have beta cyanins, which are pigments responsible for the deep color of the beets, and those are also strong antioxidants. In animal studies, it seems that beets can be helpful for the heart and the fight against cancer. And studies have also shown that it may help to mitigate the side effects of cancer chemotherapy treatment. Number 10 is dark chocolate, which is my favorite way to eat chocolate. Did you know that you're not supposed to chew on chocolate? To enjoy chocolate, you're supposed to just hold your breath, let it melt in your mouth, and then breathe. And at that point, you can taste the flavors and aromas. This way, it also helps you to eat less of that chocolate because of the sugar and fat combination. That's an addictive combo. But not all chocolate are created equal. In fact, chocolate is a processed food. It's a fermented bean, which is roasted and then pureed. The plant itself just is a super absorber of heavy metals, including cadmium. And then during the processing, it can be contaminated with lead. Now, consumer labs and consumer reports, they have shined a spotlight on how heavily contaminated cadmium and lead may be in name brand chocolates. So you do have to be careful in choosing your chocolate. Finding a minimally contaminated chocolate is just half the battle. The other half is to find a dark chocolate that is high in flavanols. Because flavanols, that's what can stimulate your stem cells and improve your blood circulation. There's ongoing research about cocoa powder's effect on opening your blood vessels, lowering your blood pressure, and increasing blood flow. Topical cocoa can also have some skin protective effects from UV damage. And if you want to learn more and how to pick your safest chocolate, watch the next video.